Assalamu alaikum. Sorry for the delay um, in joining in. All right, okay. Uh, today we'll uh, be talking about uh, only, st only 16, 17, 16 people are here. That's okay. Right, uh, today we'll be talking about the instructions and architecture. Uh, so it is an important lecture as well, and um, uh, your exam will be to the end of this lecture. So your exam uh, on the 17th will be to the end of this lecture, so from lecture one to the end of this lecture. Right, okay. So in the past few weeks, we've been talking about instruction cycles, but with different contexts and different examples and different methodologies. So the naming is very important. Okay, so in the exam, we will make it clear for you. So if I ask you in the, in the exam, if I ask you a question, I'll make it clear uh, what I want from you. And then you, you have to answer me according to the uh, question, okay? So make sure you understand every title and what's underneath the title, right? Now, last lecture, we mentioned the memory and the registers. Do you remember? We had our, oops, let me, I always forget my pen. Um, we had our uh, memory, if you remember. And also we had the registers, if you uh, remember. One of, the, one of the registers called the uh, IR. Now, I just want to refresh your memory. Uh, do you remember what IR was? Do you remember what IR was? Do you remember what IR was? Yes, instruction registry. And what did it do? What was the job of the IR? What did it do? Yeah, so data for a short time. So yeah, good, good. Uh, you, uh, I hope you remember. So yeah, it uh, it stores uh, data for a very short time, okay, before they get passed to the decoder. Do you remember in the figure we had the decoder here, okay, decoder. So uh, it is stored. It, it communicated with the memory, okay. This is uh, this is our memory, okay. It communicated with the memory. And then store data for a, for a very short while before it passed them to the uh, to the uh, decoder. Now the IR, where does it reside? Where, where, where is the location of the IR or the registry in general? The registry. Where is the location of the registry? Where is the location of the registry in the computer? Inside the CPU, yes, inside the CPU. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So because this is inside the CPU, what does it tell us? And look, look at something. It's communicating with the memory. Okay, it is communicating with the memory, right? So what does that tell us? It tells us just like the human brain. Okay. Um, imagine this is a human brain, right? Imagine this is a human brain. Oh, well, this is a nice drawing. I didn't expect it to be like this. Right. Imagine this is human uh, brain. You get different location of the human brain, does certain actions for you. For example, now, now you, you see. Now you look and you can see. Now, do you think the whole brain is working on your vision? Of course not. Because if your whole brain was working on the vision, you will not be able to do anything else but just looking. Right? So your, the brain, although the brain is responsible as, as a whole, but is, the brain is divided into sections that each section does certain, uh, certain uh, uh, actions for us. For example, I think if, 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 here, if, uh, if, we, have, if we have the eyes here, uh, the vision is at the back of the, of the brain. Okay? Here's the, the area uh, or the sensors for, for the vision. Right? While uh, uh, other things are done different. Like I, th I think the memory resides there. I think it's, uh, you know, it's here. Uh, even, even if you lie, even the lying has its own location, the lie comes here. Okay? So if, if you do lie, then, then this part of your brain works. And it's, uh, this is stated in the Quran anyway. So if, if, you, if you do lie, the, the, this area of the, of the brain, the, the forehead, Okay, this is responsible for the line. So, so your brain, it, it, it is divided into sections that each section does certain action for you. 
Similarly, the CPU. Now, the CPU doesn't do everything like at once, and all and and the whole the whole CPU works for everything. No, the, the CPU is also divided into little sections to help out. Now, imagine, for example, a university. Now, the university there's the head, there's the the uh, the uh, uh, um, the um, what do you call it? the president of the university or the manager of the university, but he doesn't do everything himself because it is impossible. So it allocates or dedicate jobs for the uh, for other people, other faculty members or other uh, uh, employees to do the job. So is is so the job will be completed as a whole, right? But no one can do the job uh, just like even even our our action, even our heart, even the heart doesn't do the job at once. The heart is divided into four uh, compartments, four rooms, and every room is responsible for something. Okay, so this is the way of organi of organization. We organize our life by de uh, dedicating certain jobs to certain parts. Right. So similarly with the CPU, we have the the registries. Now the registry, as some of you said to me, it stores data for little or short time. Now why? Because it is communicating with the memory, asking the memory for data. We saw last time how the data is fetched from the memory. It's quite a long process, as, as we saw. Now, the, the CPU, instead of the CPU that does this itself as a whole CPU, the CPU is a very busy uh, device. The CPU is a very busy device. It does all. It does everything. As the, the moment you st the moment you start your machine until the, the switch off, the, the CPU is responsible for uh, for enormous amount of information instructions. Okay, so it can do everything itself. So it dedicated little jobs to different areas. So you have the registries, one areas of the of the of the CPU is responsible to communicate with the memory. So. We saw the whole process and the long process with the memory. Eventually, the CPU gets the, the, the data ready and passes it on for processing. Do you understand the picture now? OK, so I hope you do. Right. So uh, today, we'll talk about something called so the, the whole, this, uh, this uh, operation, this operation I just talked about, is called instruction set architecture. Instruction set architecture, or ISA also referred to as ISA, right. Now ISA determines instruction formats, the way the instructions are uh, moved, okay. One of the types, we have four types of ISA, there are four types, very important types. Definitely one of them or two of them will come in the exam, definitely, we, we, I will explain them shortly. One of them is actually the little man computing. Little man computing is a one address architecture. Right, we had we talked about this in my computing. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll continue. Uh, I'll show you the I'll present you the four parts. Right. Now, uh, do you remember the little computing? Why is it called one address? Why is it called one address? Because you have the instruction on one hand, and you have the mail address on the other hand. So you have the instruction on one hand, and you have the mail address, the actual address on one on the other hand. So you only have one address, which is why we call it a one address architecture machine. Okay, right. Now, the four types of the ISA are, we have zero address machine, one address machine, two address machine, and a three address machine. Now, we will only be talking about the memory now, we'll talk about the memory, and then I'll explain where the registry comes uh, in this in this equation, what is, what, what, what's the job of the registry, okay, and why the registry is important, right? So uh, let's uh, take each uh, part separately. Now, if I give you this example, in the exam, for example, in the exam, uh, for example, okay, this is a little bit uh, okay, messed up. Um, it's covering the equation, right? Okay, let me just try the equation up here because it's co it's covered. I write the equation. Yeah, I write the equation up here so we can uh, see. So the equation. If I give you an equation in the exam, and this is funny enough for 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 those who uh, who take CS with me, uh, we only we already in, in in this week's lecture we talked about the um, uh, it was yesterday we talked about the equation and the precedence rules, and they came up with us again in in the IT 110. I didn't I didn't plan this. It just happened that you know it just. Uh, 
it's, it's the same week, the, you know, in both subjects, we, we took the same material, which is good, so we understand better. Right, so if we have the, uh, I'll, I'll write this equation down so um, you can see it. Uh, if, we, if I give you an equation in the exam, okay, so it's uh, A, this equation is A times B plus C minus uh, D times E. Now, there, are, there should be brackets in here, but I think they are missed out. Uh, if you want to write them down, I think the brackets were something like that. Okay, we talked about the brackets. Okay, just for those who do, just for those who do not take uh, CS with me and they don't know what I'm talking about, just in case, uh, right? We, in in any mathematical equation, we have something called the precedence rules. It means الأولويات. الأولويات يعني managing managing حل المعادلة مثل uh, يعني مثل ما إحنا نحب. لا, we have to follow something called the precedence rules. الأولويات. دائما دائما ال times multiplication will division. Okay, um, multiplication with division. طبعا هاي العالم بيقول division division. They are they are of the same family. Okay, and the plus will minus. They are of the other family. Always the multiplication and the division are stronger than the addition and subtraction. They are always stronger. So if you see them in an equation, we have to do them first. I do not mean that the uh, multiplication is stronger than the division, and also I do not mean that the, the addition is stronger than, than the uh, subtraction. Uh, I said they are of the same family. So if you see a, a subtraction comes on the left, before the addition, you do the subtraction first, okay? Unless you have brackets. If you have brackets, you need to solve what's inside the brackets first, then you go back and finish the equation. And if you have a bracket inside the brackets, you need to, to solve the innermost bracket, for example, in, in this example here, we need to solve this first, and then go to the outer, uh, outer brackets. Okay, that's theoretically. But but also, if if you want to solve in this example, if you want to solve this first, then this, it is fine because think about it, it will not change the answer. Whether you work with this part first and get this part, or vice versa, it will not make uh, any difference. It will be the same. Now, in assembly language, we will work from the left, so we will handle this first. Okay, then we will do the bracket because it will not change. But we will still follow the procedures. We will still still follow the procedures. Let me get so, uh, rid of something here. Okay, right. So uh, I, I've written the equation up here because uh, when I do this now, it will uh, it will cover the equation. I want to see, we want to see the equation. So it, oh come on, right? Okay, I forgot something. Right, so it's. Uh, uh, a equals uh, A times B plus uh, C, if I remember correctly, minus, I think it's like this, minus uh, D. And this is a, actually a nine because it's going to, uh, okay, never mind. Uh, minus C times uh, E. Okay, and I said the buckets were here, and the buckets were here. Okay, obviously if I if I do now this, because obviously I'm gonna have to move this uh, arrow, but so I'm gonna have to do without it. So, I mean, uh, so we need to see the equation so we know what we're doing. Okay, right. So if I give you uh, always remember something in the in the zero address machine, it deals with binary operations, which means either the, ref the, ref the memory reference either one or zero. If we have value, it will it will indicate the number one, which means that we do have value. If we have if we do not have value, it will give us the zero, which means there is no value. I will explain this more. Also, in the zero address machine, we have terminologies co called push and pop. Now, push indicates we have load. We have a, we have we need to load or input uh, or input and pop is for output output okay uh, pop show me the results right so if we take this uh, if we have this equation now uh, look 
are the instructions how they are done. Now, this is only for the zero disk machine. So, in the exam, which is why I said to you, it is very important that that you know the titles because in the exam, I might ask you, for example, I say like solve this equation, for example, using the zero disk machine. Now, don't don't ask in the exam. Your teacher will not, or the the uh, the examiner or the uh, the in uh, muraqib the supervisor will not answer your question if you say uh, what is the zero address machine or how to do this or remind me because we will not remind you you need to remember this yourself right so we come we come and say okay then we have the first value in so we need obviously we said you know push is like load so we need to push in okay now a is a variable which has a value so the memory reference will say okay then we'll give it We'll give it. We'll indicate. We'll give it a binary that uh, uh, indicates one, which means there is a data. Okay, so the processor has to go and get it. Right. Similarly, we have B. So we push in A. We push in B. That's a uh, uh, data. Then we're doing the multiplication. So we have A and we have B. Now we need to multiply them. Now the multiplication has no value itself. So the the symbol multiplication has no value. So it is zero on the memory reference because itself has no value. It's only an operation. Now, we finish this part. Okay? Now we need to go to the next part. So we have three variables inside this big bracket. We have C, D, E. So if you have the big bracket, you need to state all the variables. So we need to push C, D, E. Okay, because they are inside the bigger bracket, we need to set all the uh, variables. Then, then we need to do multiplication and subtraction. Straight away, straight away, the program will see. This is what I mean by uh, we have to see this. We have these brackets as we said we work because they are in our most brackets. We need to work with them first. So the computer will say, okay, then we have a multiplication. What it will multiply? It will multiply these two numbers, uh, these two uh, variables, the D and the E. Okay? Once we get a result, but not something, it has no value for the multiplication itself. When we get the result, we need to subtract. Okay? Subtract what? Subtract the answer from C. Okay? Also, subtraction has no value. Then, after we've done that, we need to do addition. Okay, because we, we got the va we got an answer for this. Now we need to do addition. Okay, and addition itself has no value. Once we've done the addition, then we got the whole uh, uh, we got the whole uh, the answer. So now we need to pop a, which means that we need to get the answer. This a is equivalent to this a, while this a is equivalent to this A because this is like a, a, a value that we need to load, load. But this is a destination value that we need to uh, find. So we say pop A. Okay? Right. Is what I, what I will do in this lecture, I'll, I'll go a little bit different. Every every type I give you, I'm going to ask you if you understand. Okay? So if now, because I want, I want to make sure that every uh, we have four parts. Every part that I give you, I want you to understand it. So now, if you do, if you have any question, please ask me now. Raise your hand now. If you have any question uh, regarding the zero address machine, ask me. There's one question from Munira. Yes. No. Yes. Go on. Yeah. Hello, doctor. Uh, but I I would like to ask you about, uh, depending on what you, you, you in the second uh, operation, you put multiplication, then subtract, then addition. Depending to what? What do you, sorry? Yeah, I put multiplication and sub. Uh, uh, the second uh, operation, which is yeah. multiplication. Yeah, depending to what you uh, organize uh, the operation in this way. Because uh, Ms. Afra, she told to us that uh, the first uh, the first letters in any operation in zero address machine, you have to make it in one group, and the rest will be the the other group. So, is that right? Because yeah. I understand yeah. from you, yeah, different than I understand from Ms. Afra. Yeah, that's right. 
the first letter always is a group. Yeah, always. Yep. We should see inside the brackets. Okay? So look, inside the bigger brackets, how many variables do we have? We have three variables. Okay? So we need to set the, uh, the three variables. So have this is uh, this is one. And these two are linked together because they are contained in an inner bracket. Right? So now when we say multiplication, what we mean is obviously we ha these are grouped now because they are in these little brackets. Okay? So we need to multiply them two together first and then subtract from the, the third variable that is in the big group, if you know what I mean. Does that answer your question? Did that answer your question? Okay, so what else? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, my question, Yanni, I will clear it more. Um, you, bu yeah. Wait. Uh, you push C, then D, then E. Okay. But th then after that, you multiply D, multiply, then subtract and addition. How how it's how the multiplication will be D D with E? Um, because you should put the bracket that? into. It's. My because you put Mike, the bracket. Is it clear or not that much? I think so. Uh, how? Why? Uh, you, uh, your question is how? How does the computer understand that we are uh, multiplying D with E? Is that right? I think I think this was meant. How the computer does understand that it multiplies D with E? Okay, because you already put them in a bracket, and if you remember from Java. We did say, well, as soon as you put a bracket, the computer will deal, obviously the computer will deal with the precedence, right? So when, when you put CDE, and then you put multiplication, subtraction, addition, the computer will know the order, depending on the equation that you have. Because you, you put the brackets, the computer knows the sequence that goes through, it solves the innermost bracket first, then comes out to the, to the outer number, which is C, then does the addition with the rest. Was that clear? Okay. Right. Questions? Another question? Okay. So we'll okay, we'll move on. Again, if you if you uh, if you think of any question, I will also I will also leave some time at the end of the lecture that's you for you to ask me. Right, okay. Now let's continue. Uh, these are all linked to the uh, to the same uh, thing what I just talked about. See, uh, so when when you do when you do oh, hang on, when you write a question, here you go. Now when when you do the multiplication, the the D and E were already in a bracket as you can see here. Okay, they are already in a bracket. So so once you do the multiplication, there's all there's only one. Uh, uh, possibility here, which is the one inside the bracket. Okay, so it does it, it does them as as a sequence. Okay, right. So um, all these are right. Okay. Um, okay, that's fine. Now let's move to the. That's that's what I wanted to know in the zero address machine. Okay, you know the sequence how it goes. Obviously, in the exam, I'll give you a different equation, uh, and then you're gonna have to to solve. Uh, or to give you the instruction, and I'll, I'll make it clear for you. Right. Now we have uh, another type, which is the one address machine. As I said, it's exactly as the little man computing, more or less. You have the code on one side, and you have the address, the mailbox address, on the other side. Now, if we have the same equation, okay, but imagine these times, uh, the brackets have uh, been, I didn't indicate the, the size myself, but I think the brackets have. Um, uh, have been forgotten uh, here. Uh, just a second, just let me remember. I think, um, just a second. Yep, here we go. Yeah, I think the brackets were something like that. Okay, and still, uh, okay, yep, right. So, uh, in the one adjust machine is is very similar to the little man computing. So, it goes with the, almost the same operation. Now, 
if we have this equation, but the brackets are different, differently uh, located at the moment, so you say, okay, then obviously we do not have push and pop, push and pop only in the case of zero address. Here we have a load, load and store and, and output, right? So we we load it, but here it's spelled load should be load should be written like this, uh, load, L A D. So in the exam, I want to see it in this form. Right? Okay, this is just no problem. This is just like for the sake of of showing you the um, the uh, structure, right? Uh, now, obviously, we need to do, to load a. We know this, right? If if I, if there's a user input, you need to put in input. But imagine that we have these variables are already defined in the program, so you just need to load the data. So load a. Now here it's a little bit different. Here we do not have a binary. Now, when you say load A, how many times, how many times the CPU will enter the memory? If you have this memory, okay, and this is the CPU, how many times the CPU does need to access the memory? The memory need to access the memory once to get the value of A, right? Then we multiply the A with B. How many times will access the memory now? Again, only once to get the value of B. Then we add the C to it, right? Again, we need to access one time the memory to get the value of C. Now we finish this bracket. Before we move to the next, we need to store the data that came out of this bracket. Let's call it, for example, call it T1. For example, call it T1. So we store the data, as you remember in the calculator in the uh, in the uh, LMC, when uh, some of you asked me what um, what if we have three numbers to add, okay? So I said to you, you add the two numbers, you store the data, and you add the third separate operation. Similarly here, similarly here, you finish inside the bracket, done, then you store what comes out, and then you continue, right? Now when you store the variable and call it T1, what? How many times you can access the memory? Again, you can access it one time because it's just like you're gonna go in inside the memory and store the T1, right. Then after that, we load uh, uh, D, okay, as we did before, and then we multiply by E, we access 1, 1. Then, uh -huh, we have a, a new value here, let's call it T2, right, and we store it, okay, so we have, uh, we have two numbers stored, okay, two values stored. Now, after this is done, we need to load V, value of T1, we need to load it, okay, and then we subtract T2 from it, right, so we we, uh, uh, we store T2, but it is still, we have it, you don't have to store it if you don't want to, you don't have to store it, but in this instruction it stores the, uh, T2, then we load T1 and straight we subtract T1, or T2 from T1, okay, subtraction. So now we completed the equation, and we have the value a. So then we have value for a, and we store it, or we output it. You know, it's up to you. We can store it. You can have an output. Uh, never mind. So and then we store the uh, data, uh, the uh, the a. And not something as well. Uh, just for also, you need to uh, remember uh, with the assembly, uh, with the instructions, we need to um, uh, the variables are always written in capital, even if uh, if they are given in a small in the equation, you need to write them in capital. This is fairly simple also. The one address machine is fairly simple. Is this understood? If someone else has a question regarding the one address machine, please ask. If you have a question regarding the one address machine, ask. Okay, you understand it. It's, it's fairly simple. Right, so let's move on to the third type, which is, okay, huh. I forgot to tell you something. Now, uh, the total number of accessing the memory, you can obviously it's a silly question. You can you can tell you will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten times it says here we have ten times we access the memory. Okay. The reason we put in this because we will compare with the registry if we have a registry. Okay. Okay, but directly, it, it is 10 times we need to access the memory. Right, let's continue. Now, the third type is the two address machine. Fairly interesting, fairly simple as well. Now, on the left-hand side, always on the left-hand side, we have the, the code. Then, ah, this is quite different. 
we have two addresses. It's called two address machine. We have two addresses. The one in the middle, address one, is is source and destination at the same time. So you use it as a source, but at the same time you store onto it. You use it and you store onto it, onto it. And the address two is always source. Address two is always a source. Right. So let's uh, let's take the example. Oh. Sorry, cancel this. Oh, oh then. Ah, just if I Hmm. What have I done here? Right. Is it viewed? Um, I think I messed up something here. These slides are gone. Uh, oh, you go. Right, okay. I don't know what happened there. Right, so. Oh, okay, all this technology causes problems. All right. Uh, okay, we did this. Okay, now we're talking about the two address machine. Okay, so uh, with the two address machine, uh, so yeah, uh, actually, the, the one in the middle is the source and destination, and the one on the right hand side, the second address, is always a source. So let's take the example. Right. So if we have the same equation, imagine the brackets uh, are here. Okay. Now look how the operation is done. Quite different, which is why again I said to you, you need to remember the names. Now, always we be with the two address machine. Always we, be we begin with an instruction called move, which means moving a value and give it another name. Right. So, so we move this little a this a, we move it to a variable we call t. I will tell you in a minute why, do, why we do this. It's quite, it's quite good because we're saving, we're saving uh, instructions. Okay? So we, we save it. Uh, I'll set you the one in the middle. So this is the instruction. This is in the middle. It is a source and destination. Okay? So now we use it uh, a source as a variable. And now the, the, the one on the right hand side is always a source. And we want to have we we move in a to t1, so we move in so we created t1 as a source, and then we we store in a inside a, uh, sorry we store in a inside t1. Why? Now in the previous example when we did the instruction and then we stored in a var in a variable called t1, okay, it was a we did it right, but now this is simpler. Why? You have a box. And you tr and you collecting data in it. Uh, imagine this before this, right? Okay. Imagine you move in a house. Imagine you move in a house. What you do? You get all your stuff, all your stuff in one area. Then you start putting in the box. Okay. This is a longer process. Imagine you take everything from the shelves, from the uh, you know, from the house. You put them in one area, and then you start putting in the box. Okay. It is doable. But it takes time. What if you bring a, book, a big box and you straight take stuff and put in the box? It is the, eventually, the box will have the same material, but the second method is easier. The second method is easier because you're doing it as you go along. Similar, same thing with the with the uh, with the storing thing. And instead of doing all the all the arithmetic, then we store inside a, a variable. Okay. Now we are storing inside the var variable as we go along, as we can see now. So, first of all, we move the value a inside the variable. We call it t1, for example. Then, the, sec the second thing we need to multiply. Uh, what do we multiply? Now? What do we multiply? Obviously, we multiply t1. Okay, we multiply t1 because t1 has the value of a. T1 has the value of a. We multiply T1 by B. Uh, right. In the first step, always the move has two access to the memory. How? How? You need to get the value of A and store it inside T1. 
So you get the value of A, you, start, you store it inside T1. So this, this is two memory access. Now, in the second, in, in the second uh, level, which is the multiplication, okay, you need to get the value of T1, then the value of B, then store the, then store the, the, the output, the nattage, store the, the, the result inside T1. So we have a three memory access. So you bring T1, which has the value of A, multiplies it by B, but always, 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 the middle one is this is source and destination. So it is a destination that we need to bring back to it. So the result of the multiplication between T1 and B has to be stored back inside T1. Right. The third one, we need to add C. So now T1, ah, T1 has the value of the multiplication between A and B. Okay, so this value we add it to C, and then the result again we store it inside T1. So again we have a three, a three uh, memory access, three memory access. Now we finished with this. Ah, uh, straight straight away we do we do not need to we do not need to bring an instruction called store as we did before, because we are storing as we go along. So now we have a complete value of T1. Now we have the complete value of T1. Now we move to the second part. Again, we'll do the same idea. We create a function called move. So we move D inside T1. Same thing. We need to multiply T1, which, is, which has the value of D. We multiply it by E. So we have three, uh, three memory access. Right? Now we have a value of T2 ready because it will, it will store inside. Now, we, straight away, we just need to subtract T1 and T2. Just subtract, right? Now, when we subtract them, where is the result is stored? It has to be stored in T1 because this is the way it works, okay? So when we subtract T1 and T2, T2 from T1, the result has to be stored in T1. If it was the opposite, if I say to you, for example, sub, for example, sub T2, T1, then obviously the, you, you subtract T1 from T2, but the result has to be stored in T2. Always the middle one is used for source and destination uh, at the same time. Now we finished eventually. Eventually we, we are not we got the value of T1, but we are not we have no T1 inside the equation. We are not interested in T1. We are interested in, in A. So we need to move back. We need to move the value of, of T1 inside. Let me stop, let me again, stop again. inside the A. So now we have the value of A. Simple enough, I think, now, okay. But look look what we've done. Instead of having, instead of having 10 steps, here we had 10 steps, instead of having 10 steps, okay, we had only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 steps, but 7 steps, but we have the, the, the number of accessing the memory is quite, long, uh, it's quite large. The number of accessing the memory is quite large. We have to uh, um, uh, work them out. So how, how, many, how, many, how many times did we, you, you tell me, how many times did you access the memory now? 18 times, yes, thank you. 18 times, because it's, um, it's just like we have to add them up. So 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus, plus, three plus, three plus 2 gives us 18. So 18 times we access the memory. It does say here. Now, 18 times, quite a, a large number. What if we cut it down? We can cut it down by, uh, here the registry comes. So 18, in the, in the previous method, 18 times we had to access the memory. But if we had the registry, if I had the registry, the, the number will be reduced much. Why? Now, instead of having T, the T2 or T1, we have in the values of the registry. So what 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 happens is what happens is the uh, the the um, calculations we did previously. The registry is not interested what what happens here. It's not interested. Uh, it's interested in getting the final value straight away. Oops. Okay. So the R is straight away got the value. So it only need to access the memory once, okay? 
the memory did all the work, and now the registry, sorry, the registry, sorry, the registry did, uh, it communicated 18 times with the memory, but now it will pass the CPU only one time. Okay, so it will pass the, the CPU, this result, and this result, and this result, and this result, and this result. There is no result here, okay, just a sub subtraction. It will, it will not give it a result because the result is stored in here already. By the way, by the way, this is not a T2. It's a mistake. It is an R2. Just correct it in your slides. This is not a T2. It is an R2. It's just a mistake. I cannot correct it uh, on my end because this is an image. It's not like a text file which I can write on. It's an image. Okay? But you need to correct it. So it's not a T2. It's an R2. Right. So here we, we don't need to get the result because the result of this is actually the final result which we can pass to the CPU through here. We can just give it the value of A. So it's only one time we communicated from the registry to the CPU. So one, two, three, four, five, six times. So we reduced from 18 to 6. Now if I ask you in the exam, I might ask you in the exam, obviously first if I ask you this question in the exam, but uh, uh, I, might, I might ask you two kinds of questions in the exam regarding the registry. First of all, I'm going to have to ask you to work it normal in the memory as we did before. But then I might ask you, I say, okay, then repeat your work using the registry or continue your work using the registry. If I do that, then you're going to have to present something like this for me. Okay, or I might ask you a simpler question and say to you, what is the, uh, the, what is the uh, uh, advantage of using the registry? If I ask this, you only need to answer me this. Cut memory references down, or reduce the memory references, or whatever you want. You need to say to me that it actually reduces or cuts off uh, the, uh, the memory reference down. Okay, is this understood? Do you have a question regarding the dual address machine? If you do, please ask. If you do, please raise your hand. You don't? Are you sure? I'm gonna. Something's wrong here. Are you with me? Do you hear me? I want to make sure that you are still here. Okay. Well, you are with me. You are with me. So you do understand then. Okay. I'm. I'm. You know. I'm quite happy then. Right. Let's uh, let's move to the last. Uh, we move to the last one. Which is the three address registry? What? Um, okay, we're approaching. The, okay, right. Well, okay, we'll we'll go through this now. Right. Uh, oops. Okay. Now uh, the three address registry, which is the, the last one, is uh, again fairly simple. Now we have the code on the left hand side as usual, but this time we have a destination as one separate address. Not like the two address the, the, in the two address machine, we had the, the we had the the one in the middle as a source and destination at the same time. Here is different. We have a slot. We have a slot is prepared only ready to accept uh, re, uh, results. Okay, so it's only a destination, and we have two addresses for sources. So we have source one and source two. Let's uh, give the example. Okay, same thing. Okay, let's work this uh, this out. So now multiply. By the way, it's, it's, uh, don't write it like this, please. Write it as well. Okay. Uh, again, it's the slides uh, not always uh, shows the exact thing. Never mind. Okay, this is okay. So, but in the exam, write it like like mul. Okay, as multiplication. Right. So we'll do the a, b, and c. Uh, multiply a and b. Okay. So now uh, now we have a separate slot for the destination. Then we have these two numbers that we multiply, so source 1 and source 2. We multiply them and we put the result inside T1. Now, we need to add T1, which now this is T1, okay? We need to add, open stops working, we need to add T1 to C, okay, and store the result again in a slot called T1. We want to overwrite it. Oh, by the way, when we are doing T1, 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 what's happening? Uh, it's, uh, it's just simply overwriting. So if this is T1, and let's say this is address, uh, address uh, 9, for example, just for example, and this is T1, okay? It's just overwriting it. The, you know, just every time overwrite, as I said to you, always in one slot we can have only one uh, value. So it overwrites it, or you can open another slot, it doesn't matter. You can either open another slot if you have a, 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 an empty space, or you can overwrite, overwrite. Overwriting is better, obviously, because you, here you save memory location and the process will be a little bit faster. 
Right, okay. So we have three steps. We have three steps. We we get in value of fetching A, fetching B, and storing to T1. Next one, we fetch in T1, adding C, and then back storing to T1. So we have another three steps. Okay. Again, we need to multi multiply. Uh, uh, we have T2 now. We multiply D and E and store it inside T uh, T2. Then then we need to sub T2 and T1 and straight away store it inside A. Very simple. You know, but instead of saying load A and stuff like that, or store A, it's easy. As soon as you do sub, you are already storing in A. Very simple. So we cut down the instruction to four only, but at this time we have 12 uh, instructions. Now, okay, if we had the registry, it will be, uh, oh, if we have the registry, it will be six times. Okay, so for, two for this, because it is uh, uh, only, it, it, it's got the uh, the result of them and has the storage. Okay, so it's given two. Here, we already have R1. We only need C. Okay, so this is one. Here, we need D and E, so we have two. And here, we only need A, the value of A. So we have one. So it cuts down to the half this time, uh, from 12 to 6 uh, memory uh, addresses. Now, uh, the last slide. Okay, comparison is quite important actually. What I will do, um, comparison I will explain it in a separate lecture because I want to give you practicing questions. By the way, uh, I will ask you this question now. Uh, one of you can, uh, can answer me. Uh, do you have extra lecture? I think you have extra face-to-face -face lectures, okay? Uh, one of you now, the first one, gets the microphone and answer me this question. I think, oh no, um, Never mind. I think if you don't know, okay, if you, I think um, you will soon, you will have an extra, just before the exam, you will have an extra face-to-face -face lecture. Uh, uh, and in this lecture, what we will do, I will pass to the other, to the other lecturers, to the other, uh, my colleagues, I will pass them uh, a list of uh, maybe practicing questions that uh, you can do. Okay, so I want, uh, this is quite important actually, I want to explain separate and I will give you practicing questions as well, because, um, you know, it's, it's quite important, right? Any question regarding the uh, the three uh, address machine? Any question regarding the three address machine? Or any question? Do you have any question regarding today's lecture? Any question? Do you understand? Are you sure? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and I'm very happy. Okay, oh, we have one question. Right. Yeah, go on. Hello, Doctor. Uh, I would like to ask you just how can we cut the memory addresses down? Yeah, using the register, obviously. Use the register. Register. So, for example, here in the normal memory, sorry, it's, it's quite messy now. In the normal memory, for example, we have a three time three times you need to access the memory, right? If we, if we imagine the CPU wants to access the memory, which is the registry accessing the memory, it accesses it three times. For example, in, in the first line, we need the value of A, so this is one time. We need the value of B, this is two times. And then, and then we need to store to T1, this is three times. Now, the opposite side, if we communicate in the registry only, so the registry, oh, the registry already communicated with T1, so now it needs to pass the information to the CPU, right? Start, uh, um, communicate to the CPU. Now it's already got the uh, uh, inside if there is a, inside if there is a slot for storing. I said it works as a very temporary storage. So it will only need to communicate A and B, okay, with the CPU with the memory. It only needs to communicate A and B, but the value is stored inside the registry, which is already inside the, the CPU. It's already inside the CPU. So only twice we need to access the memory. Because it is now stored in the registry, simple. The, reg the registry itself is inside the CPU. Okay, so the CPU is, is less load on the CPU now. Okay? Uh, we have a question from uh, who's now on here? Uh, yeah? Yeah, Doctor, uh, sorry, but I, I didn't understand the second uh, address machine, not uh, just uh, the, the previous uh, way, the first way. 
Would you like to just say it and understand the uh, uh, This one. This one. Um, yeah, this one. This one. All right, let yeah. me delete this uh, mess. Just uh, let me clear, clear it a little bit. Oops. I think this is uh, okay. This is fine. It's watchable, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll repeat these steps um, in, in in a short, right? So uh, in the two address, we always start with something called move. It's a move instruction. Now in the move, you as said again, again the example that uh, for example in the Windows in the Windows machine, if you move in a house, uh, you you get all your stuff in one place, then you put them in a box. Now this will take time. What if you bring the big box and straight away, instead of taking your stuff into a location, then store them in the box? No, straight away, take the stuff that you want to store and put them in the box as you go along. As you go along, put the stuff in the box. Now, the same idea applies here. So if we get, if we get a, a storage a, a location called, oops, sorry. If we get storage location called T1, now I need I just but what I do I move the value of a to t1, right? Then I multiply it with a. Oh, sorry, with b. Sorry, first of all, sorry. So I get the uh, the a, right? I store it inside t1. Now then I need to do the second part, which is the multiplication, second step, multiplication. Now t1 has the value of a because we moved value a, a to t1. So it has the value. So I can straight multiply T1 with B, but according to the to address, uh, rule, to address machine rule, always the one in the middle, in the middle slot, is a source and destination. So when you do your operation, it will store inside the middle one, because this is the rule. This is the rule of it. You store inside the middle. So we, we multiply T1, which is A originally, by B, and the result will be stored in T1. We continue. So now when we do the addition, T1 has the value of the multiplication between A and B, so it has the result. So if we add the result to C, okay, we add the result to C, the, again, the, 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 the result, the new result, will again be stored, to, uh, stored inside T1 according to the rule. Okay, so now the good thing is we do not, to create, we do not need to create an instruction called store. Because the value is already stored as we go along. As you, as I said, you, you bring the box and you put things in it. It's a storing, so you have no problem with it. You do not need to create a function or uh, an instruction called store. Right. So you finish the first part. The second part, the second part, you do the same. So you move the value of d to a new box called t2. You you multiply with e. Okay, the result is stored in T2. Now straight away you have the two boxes ready for you. They are there with you. You subtract T, the, the T2 box from T1. Okay, then the result will be stored in T1. So this is the final result. What you do now, but because again we don't have T1 in the equation, we have A. We are interested in this A. So straight away you say, okay, then move. T1 inside A, so now we have the final answer. Is this, is this clear enough? Yeah, it's clear. Okay, about the uh, memory access. Yeah. Uh, in the first one, we get two and ten. Two. It didn't Why? Too much. Why? Because we have A, and we store it to T1. So we need we need to fetch the value of A, and we need to store to T1. So we have one, two. Okay. While in the second instruction we have a three. Why? We need to get the value of b. We need to get the value of t1, and we need, and we need to store the, the new result in t1. Is understood? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you, Victor. Right. Yeah, Another thank question. You. Okay. No problem. Another question. Another question. Okay, so no question. So yeah, uh, again, so the exam will be to, uh, until the end of this uh, lecture, uh, and please do revise. Make sure you understand everything. Uh, the recordings are there for you. The slides are there in the folder. All 
uh, uh, all there for you as well to read. Uh, you can um, there's the book as well. There's the internet. So even any uh, any topic you don't understand within the slides, go and search uh, the internet. Go and for example look at look at the two address machine. For example, if you just send uh, something, go there, there are like so many examples on the web. Go read the book as well. So look where is the two address machine and read on it. Okay, uh, it is important to read uh, and to understand. In, in, in order to get a good a grade in your midterm. The midterm uh, uh, worth 25% of your total grade. So it's quite a lot of, a lot of marks. OK, so please, please make sure you try to get a good grade out of that. Uh, if you do not understand anything as well, you have your face-to-face your -face lecturer. You can ask them. And also uh, refer back to me as a last choice as well. You know, if, uh, try to go, try to go through all the process uh, just to get the load off me. But if you really stuck and you do not understand anything, then you can you can email me with your question. Okay. So at this end of the, uh, today's lecture, and I hope you got some benefit out of it. Until I inshallah see you next time. So um, have a nice weekend and see you manager.